Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. The true red tail boas that can trace their origin to northern Brazil are quite different in appearance from those hailing from Peru, Suriname, and other localities, and they're also quite a bit rarer in U.S. collections. Today I want to show you a few northern Brazilian red tail boas. I'm going to point out the morphological characteristics that characterize this locality and I'm also going to discuss the captive husbandry. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos on keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. This is a female northern Brazilian red tail boa. This animal was born in 2015, so she's coming up on five years old. She's not quite sexually mature. I'd say she's about five feet or so in length. This particular animal was produced by Mike Weitzman of Basically Boas, and the breeding stock that he used descended from Eugene Bissett, as well as Evans Dyer and Gus Renfro. So a few things about the physical appearance of these boas. The ground color is different from that of the Suriname or Guiana or Peruvian red tails. So they have this kind of yellowish grayish background color. So um, if you look at a Suriname or a, a Guiana red tail, typically they'll have either a purplish gray background color or kind of a pinkish buckskin. Whereas the, you can see the ground color of this animal is quite a bit different. It definitely has a yellowish tint to it, but it's not nearly as bright or as golden yellow as a Peruvian boa. So it's just a kind of a unique color. And if you look at pictures of the different localities of true red tail boas, after a while you'll see the trends in the ground color that separates these different localities. So another characteristic of true red tails is the shape of the saddle. And the shape of the saddle tends to be kind of irregular looking, not quite aberrant, but almost spiky and kind of jagged looking. Um, just kind of a really cool, unique look to them. To me, it looks kind of more wild than the more perfectly symmetrical saddle that you might see in a really nice peaked uh, Suriname. And then, you know, often they'll have striping or even more regular saddle shapes to them. But I think what really, to me, is the most defining characteristic of many true red tail boas from Brazil is they have this huge number of background markings. So they have a very dirty look to them, which I find quite appealing. They have all these freckles and speckles and intersaddle markings. You can see all of the blotches and all kinds of cool markings to them. And then if you look at the head of the North Brazils, typically they have a lot of freckling on the head and they have really well-defined eyelash markings to, above their eyes. One more physical characteristic of the Brazilian true red tail boa is the tail. And the tail can be quite long and quite bright red, but in general, it's not quite as long or as bright as that of a Suriname or a nice Guianan true red tail boa. So this particular animal has a, quite a long red bright tail for a North Brazilian red tail. Some of them have considerably shorter and not as bright tails. And I'll show you an animal in a few minutes that has a tail that looks like this. This is a male also from 2015 produced by Mike Weitzman. And so compared to the female I just showed you, this guy has kind of a more light, almost pale yellow coloration. You can see he's also got these really dark, almost inky black saddles, which provide a lot of contrast. And this beautiful bright red tail. This is a real beautiful looking animal. You can see he's got kind of a wild look to him with all these background markings and freckles. Just a gorgeous animal. So um, the one other trait of the Brazilian red tails is they tend to be a little smaller than other localities of red tails. The adult females get to about six or six and, six and a half feet. The males are about a foot or so shorter than that. One more northern Brazil red tail to show you. 
This is an animal that was born in 2016. And this female was produced by Vin Russo from Lloyd Lemke's bloodline. So this particular animal is a little bit darker than the uh, pair that I just showed you. And you can see her tail's a little bit shorter and not quite as bright red. But she's got this beautiful wild look to her with these spiky uh, looking saddles, kind of blocky. Um, so you can see she's got some striping on her neck and just a lot of the background markings that characterize the northern Brazilian boas. The exact locality of where these northern Brazilian boas originated is not known, but they're thought to be from northern Brazil, not too far from the border of Guiana and or Suriname. So there's also another true red tail boa from Brazil that's known as the Belém locality. And these animals are from the outskirts of the city of Belém in northeastern Brazil on the Atlantic coast. And that's southeast of the likely site of the northern Brazil boas. So to my eye, the Belém boas look pretty similar to the North Brazilian boas, but I recommend that you check out some of the photographs online of the different Brazilian localities so that you can sort it out in your head. I should also mention there are, Brazil, there are boas from South Brazil, which are said to be of the subspecies boa constrictor amaralli, the short-tailed boa, but a lot of them have appearance that's intermediate between boa constrictor constrictor and boa constrictor amaralli, so it's possible that they might be naturally occurring integrates. As I mentioned, the North Brazil red-tailed boas are quite rare in captivity today, and the country of Brazil has been closed to exportation of snakes since the late 80s. So that's why there's far fewer of them in captivity than the Guiana or Suriname boas. Um, there's quite a few dedicated breeders working with them though, so hopefully the supply of these animals will be ensured for the next few decades. One last thing I want to mention is, in general, I found them pretty similar to the other types of red tails. They seem to need more humidity though, and I've had, some of them have had shedding issues if I didn't have enough humidity. Also, they tend to be a little more hissy than my, my Surinams or Peruvian boas. This female, for the first few years, she would hiss constantly and she would strike at the side of the tub. Um, she seems to have mellowed out quite a bit though in the last year or so, and now she's about four years old. You can see she's fairly docile and you know quite handleable. But just a really cool boa. Um, you know, these are a real nice red tail. Hopefully I'll be producing some of these in the next few years. Uh, my older pair might be ready to breed next year, or more likely they'll be ready to pair up the year after. But I've just enjoyed raising these animals up over the last few years. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.